this video, we're going to look at the propagations from Cinghiale and Corte di Ferro using all three combinations, sword, dagger, and cloak. This is a fairly short section, not quite as short as La Licorna, for example, but we're going to see a lot of the same actions repeating themselves over and over and over again. So starting with sword of one hand, we have two options. We can either thrust to the face using a stoccata, or we can thrust to the face using a punta reversa. Both of which will give us different options. So, as the agent, I'm going to come in with a full cut to the face. Depending on how they react, I will either throw a stramazzone, if it's a fairly tight stramazzone to the head, if it's a fairly tight defense. If they're a little bit wider like this, you can turn that into a mandrito tondo to the head. As the person on the receiving end, he indicates that we're going to use the false edge to cover. So this comes in, I'm going to bring this here, just kind of to get out of the way. And then as they react, we can go to Fasha and have them run up to our sword, or strike the hand by standing back. So here and cut the inside of the arm. Option two is we use the punta diversa, which will turn into an abrocata. So here they're going to defend with the true edge. We're going to realign ourselves and then thrust using this downward, it's the descending thrust. So see if I get the different angle. Here we're going to come in, they beat our sword, we take that energy and direct, striking with an imbrocata to the chest. Now as the person on the receiving end, we're going to defend this with the true edge. And then as they come around and change directions to strike us, we're going to basically do the exact same thing. Use our own ridopio and give them a kata in return. So the hunter comes in, we beat it. As they come in, we step around, strike, and then leave with a reverso, ending up in Kodomoka. So in the deck we have similar actions. So we can thrust to the face with a stoccata, we can cut to the hand with a stramazzone, or we can put reversa and turn that into a imrocata instead. So first one is we come in and we either turn that into a like, attack to the leg using the reverso, or if they're pretty wide with their defense, we turn that into a mandrito to the head. And we're gonna end up in portifero alto, so the, the higher version of this card. As the person responding, depending on uh, how, we, how we answer, that'll kind of drive them to do one of two things. So if we, as the defender, the patient, use our dagger to parry, this will likely lead them to use the attack to the leg. So if we're here, we use this to get out of the way, we defend against leg attack, and strike with the Nebrocata. If instead we have used the sword, so using a true which also didn't actually specify, uh, which causes them to do the cut to the other side, we'll simply step back and strike the inside of the arm. So we've defended, they come around, striking as their arm is right about there. Option two is we can step forward and throw a stranazone towards their sword hand. As the person receiving on this, this is the one of the few times we're going to use entrare to sneak in there and strike to the chest. So the time here, they go for this big action, want to meet them on the outside and strike to the chest. Finally, we can do a faint, fainted punta reversa to the face and turn this into that imbrocaggio like we did with sword in one hand. Just a little bit easier because we have this to kind of keep our low outside covered. 
So here we're gonna skip a look at this transition and change, uh, change the strike their flank. So we'll do that again. So we step forward, turn, and go. As the person on the receiving end, we're going to use the false edge of the sword to parry. As they come in, we're going to do the same thing as before. Use the ridopio to defend and strike with our own imbrocata. So we're going to use this false edge. As they start turning, we will do our own turn and strike them on their outside to this part of their body. Finally, we have the cloak, where we have, again, three options, uh, all of which are thrusts. Now, the difference here is that in the first defense, the patient has not moved their feet, where the second two, they have. So that's kind of the key uh, point here, is that number one, the foot has not moved yet, and the second and third, they have, which gives us slightly different options on both sides. So in our first case, as the agent, I'm going to give a put the rest of the face, and depending on how they respond, turn them to a person's leg, or even to the, to, the, to the head. So here, come in, and either turn that into a leg cut, or we step in, trade, and cut to the side of their head. As the person on the receiving end, I can respond to this in Using my, well, using my true edge, and then depending on which thing they throw, I have my two options. So if I do have my true edge, but don't move my foot, and they follow up with a reverso to the leg, I'm going to step back, strike the arm. With a mandrito, so the beat, as they go low to strike this leg, you simply step back and attack their arm as it's crossing side of the line. If instead, they, sorry, if we're looking for a the mandrito response, we're using our false edge as they come around. Oh, sorry, yeah, as they yeah, so as they do the mandrito, we use our false edge as they come around. We're going to use the cloak to defend ourselves and strike their leg with our own mandrito. So here they come around. We're going to step in and strike their leg. Second option, uh, we're going to give another punta de in the face, but this time they're going to step with their defense. Uh, in this case, being a uh, true edge. So when we've done that, we're going to pick up their cloak, their sword from underneath. From there. Pick up their cloak, pick up their sword, using our cloak, driving it up, and striking a number five. A mandrito tondo to their legs. So basically what we're doing is we're stepping forward as they defend. We're going to pick this up and keep stepping to that side, striking the inside of their leg. So see from the side here, I'm here, we're going to thrust to the face and strike the leg. So obviously as you mentioned, this is a big motion so I need a lot of space to do this. If I'm in very close quarters, this is not really going to work. I need enough space such that I can do this attack, pick up their sword, clear my own over my head, and strike to the inside of their leg. So it's a fair amount of time and space that I need. As the person responding to this, we're going to defend by stepping forward and using a falso manco. And then as they or we're simply going to step back and throw a mandrito to their head, or a reverso to the head. So essentially we've stepped as they start bringing our hand up. We're going to keep it going up and strike with a reverso as we take that right foot back. Finally, unless we make another thrust, this time it's just a slokata. They're going to defend, again, using the false edge, stepping forward which will give us the option to do a second thrust to the outside. So it's two punta reversa, uh, so it's a thrust followed by a punta reversa, where we're 
want to come here as they defend. I'm going to essentially check their weapon, freeing this up, and striking again to their outside. So see from the side we have thrust, pick it up, and keep going to their outside. Now, as the person on the receiving end, uh, we're going to set up the outside slip. So we're here, they come, up, come over. As they try to push our hand up, we're going to let it as we have our left hand come across, and we strike them as they're stepping past us with that overhand reversal. So those are the provocations and counters from Ching Yale. Overhand left is Anikorma. Last two guards, right and left.